So that is why we need to ask Allah's goodness and mercy at all times. Then it is also important that we make dua for others, not just for ourselves. I told you a few nights back, that when you make a dua for someone else, the angels are saying, Ya Allah, give him even better. Allahu Akbar. So when you say, Ya Allah, give that man a beautiful house, Ya Allah, which has everything modern in it, the angels are saying, Ya Allah, give this person even better. Alhamdulillah. We should not be selfish when it comes to dua, inshallah. And this is why even the angels make dua for us. Listen to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Do you know his duas were so powerful? Allah calls him an ummah and a whole nation. He made dua for all of us. Listen to what he said. Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam. It is amazing how he says, Rabbi ja'al hadha baladan amina warzuq ahlahu min al-thamarat man amana minhum billahi wal yawm al-akhir. O oh Allah, not just me. O oh Allah, not just me. But this entire city, this entire town, Ya Allah, make it peaceful, Ya Allah. And grant the inhabitants of this town produce and goodness and blessings and what have you. Up to today in Makkah al where this dua was made, they have peace, they have stability, they have serenity, they have a sacred holiness in the city itself and at the same time over and above that they have produced galore though it doesn't grow there may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of understanding because the dua was made for someone else a dua li akhika fi dhahri al ghayb to make a dua for your brother or your sister in islam without them knowing that you've made dua for them without them knowing who you even are tonight we made dua for the suffering souls in palestine in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Somal, in Pakistan, wherever they are on the globe, we made a dua for them. Do they know us? No. Do we know them? No. What is the bond? The bond is La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah That is the bond we know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us strength. So we make dua for others. It is far more likely that that dua will be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another very important point, we need to make dua after doing good deeds. And I've made mention of that at the beginning of my talk, that you do a good deed, then you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, accept it from us. Rabbana taqabbal minna. This is why when it comes to the end of a dua, normally when you hear Rabbana taqabbal minna, you now know that the dua is almost complete. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance and understanding. Those who know the Arabic language will tell you that that is now depicting the end of the dua. Where we are saying, oh Allah, accept it from us, ya Allah. We've made a dua, we've done a good deed, ya Allah. Accept it from us. May Allah accept our salah. May He accept our fasting. May He accept our recitation and our listening to the Holy Quran. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write our names from amongst those whom He shall free tonight. May Allah free us from the fire of Jahannam. Then it is important also that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the goodness of the dunya, for the goodness of this world as well. Worldly items, yes, we need them. We ask Allah. But we should balance it with the akhirah. Listen to what Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ O oh Allah, grant us goodness in this world. Grant us goodness in the, in the hereafter. And save us from the punishment of the fire. If you take a look at that dua, if you were to divide it into three, 33% of it is connected to this world. And 66% of it is connected to the akhirah. I am leaving out the decimals. Someone might say that makes 99. No, we are leaving out the decimals here. One third is for the dunya. Two thirds is for the akhirah. That helps us a lot. When we are making dua, let us try and keep the same ratio. Two thirds of our dua must be connected to the eternal life. One third connected inshallah to this dunya. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness here and goodness there as well inshallah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us also that it is important for us to make a dua that Allah remove hatred in our hearts. Allah removes the hatreds that might be in our heart against other believers, those who have believed before us or with us. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And this is a very, very important dua in Surah Al-Hashr. رَبَّنَا غُفِرْ لَنَا O Allah, forgive us. وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا بِالْإِيمَانِ And forgive those of our brothers who have preceded us in faith. 
Those who came before us, those who are more faithful than us, they have preceded us in faith. وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلًّا لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And O oh Allah, do not place in our hearts any form of hatred against those who have believed, Ya Allah. And this is why a person who has hatred in his heart for those who believe, it is a sickness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure us from those type of sicknesses as well. Then it is also important that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we make dua at the time of difficulty. You have a problem. There is no one to resolve your problem. You are right, you think you are right. And someone else is wrong, they've oppressed you. Now there is no one to judge between you. Allah will be the judge. The dua to make. رَبَّنَا افْتَحْ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَ قَوْمِنَا بِالْحَقِّ وَأَنْتَ خَيْرُ الْفَاتِحِينَ Oh Allah, you be the judge between us and between these people here. Between our people, Ya Allah, you are the best of judges, Ya Allah. Continue making that dua in your difficulty and Allah will expose who is right and who is wrong in your problem. Allahu Akbar. So that is why this dua, some of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this dua. And when they made it, it was granted to them and there was definitely a day that came when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala judged between them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us every form of goodness. Then it is important that we realize that we need to make dua to Allah as is mentioned in the Quran to protect us from being oppressive as well as to protect us from being oppressed. So there are two things. We make dua, Ya Allah, protect us from oppression. But ask yourself, are you not from amongst those who oppresses others, whether it is your spouse, your children, what have you? You should remember, if you are oppressing, Allah will create someone who will oppress you. So when you are making dua that, Ya Allah, save me from an oppressor, it is important that you ask yourself, am I oppressing anyone in the process? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from both, inshaAllah. We don't want to oppress and we don't want to be oppressed as well. Those duas are also mentioned in the Quran. Then it is important to also make a dua. For Allah to take you out of a bad environment, to take you out of a bad suburb, to take you out of a city where the people are bad, the people are filthy, we need to make dua and make an effort to leave that place where the environment is bad. رَبَّنَا أَخْرِجْنَا مِنْ هَذِهِ الْقَرْيَةِ الظَّالِمِ أَهْلُهَا Oh Allah, remove us from this environment where the inhabitants are bad and filthy, Ya Allah. Make it easy for us to go elsewhere where inshallah we will be able to uplift your command and be from amongst the worshippers whom who will earn your pleasure inshallah and whom you will be pleased with. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that we need to also make a dua that Allah forgive our sins, forgive our shortcomings, forgive our mistakes. And at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, some of the most powerful du'as, which I'm sure all of us know by heart, we need to read the meanings. And when we are making the du'a, we need to think about the meaning. رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَاخِذْنَا إِن نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا O oh Allah, do not hold it against us where we have made a mistake or where we have forgotten. Ya Allah, if we've forgotten something, don't hold it against us. And if we've really made a mistake out of error, Ya Allah, forgive us. Don't hold it against us. رَبَّنَا وَلَا تَحْمِلْ عَلَيْنَا إِصْرًا كَمَا حَمَلْتَهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِن قَبْلِنَا O oh Allah, do not burden us with burdens that you have burdened those before us with, Ya Allah. We sit and read about Banu Israel, we read about the others, Ya Allah. Don't burden us with those type of burdens, Ya Allah. That's a powerful dua. رَبَّنَا وَلَا تُحَمِّلْنَا مَا لَا طَاقَةَ لَنَا بِهِ وَعْفُ عَنَّا وَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَارْحَمْنَا أَنْتَ مَوْلَانَا فَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ Oh Allah! Do not burden us or do not test us with something that will be too difficult for us. Do not burden us with that which will be too difficult for us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, have mercy on us. Forgive us, Ya Allah. Wa'afu anna, wa'afir lana. And have mercy on us. Bless us in every single way. For indeed, you are our protector, Ya Allah. Anta maulana. You are our protector, Ya Allah. So help us against those who disbelieve, those who intend any form of harm against us, Ya Allah. You help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us at all times, Ya Allah.